Hey there, my web crafting wizards. Do you want to create cool websites and cool designs with 3D and animations and stuff like that, but you don't know where to really start? Don't worry, I've been down the same path as you. So in this episode, I want to give you a list of like the best tools and tips and tricks that I've learned over the past 10 years when it comes to design to help you, uh, you know, make something really cool. Because even me, like six years ago, you want to see the design I did six years ago? There. We'll see, like no one's gonna be happy with that. That's just sad right there. So hopefully this episode helps you a little bit. Let's get into the list. Drop a sub, drop a like. Let's go. When it comes to colors, I really like to use Colorbox. And the fantastic thing about Colorbox is that it generates a full palette from one color. That means like different shades from white to dark, which you can also customize. So if you work with a lot of developers, uh, there has been this huge shift over to working with Tailwind CSS. And Tailwind CSS has something quite similar set up where they have a color scheme uh, that has, you know, a variation from dark all the way to white, just like this. See? So this is what's fantastic about Colorbox. You can just pick a color and get that color scheme generated straight away. So on the right side here, as you can see, we have contrast one and contrast two. So if I just head over here, let's hit the plus icon and create a new color. And as you can see, I can even set the hue. So if I want this to shift over to another color, you can do that as well. But in our case, let's just pick the same one. So let's do maybe this green color. As you can see, that looks quite nice. And we can even adjust the start and the end here. So if I don't want this to be pure white on zero, I can move it slightly up maybe to 0 0.1. So we still have that shade of green. And the same I can do for the bottom one here. So let's go to the end and just push this up to maybe 90. So 0, 90 and 0, 1. The best thing is we can even hit export here and just export this as a JavaScript object. It also has a Figma plugin and also an NPM package that you can install to even like generate these palettes for you. So before I use Colorbox, I actually use Colors, which is a great website to just generate random palettes for you. I don't really use this anymore. Like the palette generator, I find that to be quite random anyway, and it's just never gonna generate colors for you that like you feel like are matching anyway. Even though you can come here and adjust these, I feel like most of the time you're just ending up pressing space like 20,000 times and, and you end up picking no colors. However, there is a little secret tool within colors that I think is super underrated that I haven't seen people really use it that much. So check this out. So go over to explore trending palettes here and you can pick one of the popular palettes. So let's go for, I don't know, maybe this one, right? So rather than just like clicking and copying the colors, hit the little icon here at the bottom and go over to visualize colors. This will give you like a template of a website and how those colors would look on it, which I think is fantastic. But the best part is I can head over here to the bottom and pick a Anagulous color scheme if I want to, or a complementary one, for example. So if I do complementary and hit generate, as you can see, we are getting that nice green here with purple, all right? Because purple and green are the on the opposite sides of the spectrum, so they complement each other. So you can just hit generate here and find something to your liking. Like that one looks pretty good as well. The next one I want to talk about is ShadCN, which is a fantastic tool for developers who usually do this to essentially have these pre-styled components that look really pretty. But I think it's a great example to get inspired by and to see how they work with colors here. And as you can see, mainly, it's usually just one primary color and then there's like a shade of that that they use for some contrast here for the cards. But here they basically allow you to try out different colors, and kind of get an idea of how your website would look. Now they only have five or six colors here, so it's quite limited, but someone made a website called Gradient Page. And if you go to tools, they have a chat CN generator here where you can just plug in your custom color. So what I end up doing usually is heading over to Colorbox, finding a color that I like, so, so I can just head over back to Colorbox, for example, and I can turn on this hex button here just so I can copy these values over. So let's take this one from the four, paste it in here and see how that looks. And as you can see, we are getting that nice color scheme already pre-applied and it does it to the checkboxes, it does it to the forms and everything else. You will also need a contrast checker for your website. So you want to make sure that the foreground text is clearly separated from the background text and the text is clearly visible and easy to read. So this is a great tool to do that. And for the background colors, I usually tend to keep it simple, black or white, like leave it at that, you know, 
at, I remember at the beginning when I started doing design, I just mixed up all the colors, added different kinds of background colors, uh, and it just ended up not looking nice. <laughs> so keep it simple, black, white, and then for your foreground color here, again, like let's say we will take that green here, right, and just do a check on that. So foreground, let's paste that in, and as you can see, almost passes everything. It doesn't pass the last test here. So you can see the start and the end here. I'll just lift up the end to like 0 0.2 and see how that looks. Okay, so let's copy the four over again. So now if I paste that color in there, as, as you can see, it passes all of it. So it's clearly readable even on a 12 pixel text or on the button here. And then, of course, when you switch it over to light mode, this is in your code or wherever you have something so that text would change over to that darker shade of green from our colors panel here, right? And there we go. So that passes as well. So there we go. That's pretty much all the tools I use for like finding colors for my websites. Again, I think the best thing you can do is generally keep it to a minimal amount of numbers. So one or two colors max and try to go from there. It's always easier if you're limited to a set amount of colors and try to make the best of it rather than having 12 or 14 different colors as options. Uh, because once you start scaling up a website, you might have a lot of inconsistencies. You might use colors here and then you're not using it on this card or you might use it on this input but not on that input. And then it just ends up getting confusing. Okay, so try to limit yourself one or two colors and then black or white for the background. And then once you get really comfortable in the future, you can start experimenting with adding gradients in the background and kind of mixing colors together like that. So let's move on to the next one. We're going to talk about fonts. Just like I said about colors, the same rule applies to fonts. Don't pick 10 fonts, pick one or two. Um, and Google fonts, you should usually be fine with this. They do provide really nice consistent fonts that are really popular used across hundreds of websites so you know you're getting your good stuff here but yeah like Roboto, Poppins, Montserrat, you know Railway, fantastic fonts that you can just use as one all right you, if you put Poppins in and use it across your website it's gonna look great so let's check it out if we click on Roboto here for example you can see they provide different weights for that font as well so that's really cool because you can just simply select them you can also preview how it would look here. Uh, the one thing I, I don't like it is like pairing different fonts. Um, you, you, it's, it's a bit difficult to do here. So that's why I really like font share as an alternative. If you want to see how you could pair together two different fonts, uh, they do provide like pretty much everything Google fonts provides here. So if I search for Poppins, for example, as you can see, it's right there. And the kind of the UI is quite cool as well in this one, but I can go here to pairs so I can just easily preview like, oh, okay, synonym regular with Anami Bowl looks quite sick actually, I might use that. And as you can see, we have four styles selected. I believe I selected two more uh, and then we can head over here to use and we can just copy over this link tag to our website. Or we could also just download the font down here at the bottom. Okay, let's talk about 3D in the browser. This has been hard for the longest time ever. You'd have to essentially like resort to using WebGL and then try to figure everything out by yourself. Eventually libraries came along like 3JS that would like make it much, much easier. But now we have tools like Spline that just lets you fully edit and create a 3D model or an animation in the browser and just link and export it straight to a website. So it's really simple. I do have a couple of tutorials on this channel if you're interested in checking it out. But if you just head here to the Spline community, you're going to see a lot of amazing things that can be done with this. Not only you can create these amazing effects like that, but also lets you add state to them. So if you want to do some sort of scroll animations that involve 3D or maybe tapping or clicking, you can do that all within Spline. You can also create like scroll animations and stuff like this, like make stuff follow your mouse. That's pretty cool. I'm not sure if you've seen Apple's AirPods website before, but they have this crazy animation. When you scroll down, you have this like really crispy high quality render of the AirPods. And you can do that in Spline, but you're never going to have that like ray tracing quality rendering that Apple is going to have. And the way they do that is it's going to be a 3D software. So for creating something like this, I use Blender. So Blender allows you to just create any animation you want. This software can create, you know, Pixar movies, 
anything that you can imagine. And the way they do it on the website here is essentially they're rendering out from Blender a bunch of WebP images for each frame of that animation. So for example, here in Blender, if I go in, I can go here to the final rendered view like that. And again, if you turn on ray tracing here in the settings, for example, from EV to cycles, this is gonna give you that like super realistic quality. So the lights are like bouncing properly. You're gonna get nice reflections and everything. So here they basically make their animation. I'm not gonna make the animation right now, but just as an example to kind of, so this would be the AirPod, right? You probably have two of them. There we go. So they essentially animate these. So let's put this here, pop over the panel. So I'll just move it up, for example. So let's go 50 frames in. We'll just slide that over to that side, for example, and put an iframe, a, a keyframe on it. And then here, and let's say for the starting position, we'll just move it back there like that. Okay, so now when we hit space, as you can see, that animates. Now again, when you have like different vertices, you can just manipulate everything. And now if you check the network tab here in the browser, you're gonna see that they have a JPEG image for every single frame of that high quality animation. So basically when you scroll, it just switches between those web JPEG images in this case. So if you master Blender, I mean, you can pretty much create whatever your imagination allows you to do. It does take a lot to learn, but I think it's a valuable tool. Next up, let's talk about 2D animations. I usually tend to keep it simple now with just like some plain CSS. Uh, but for more complex animations like this with SVGs, Lottie was the way to do it, and it's still the way if you want to do it. However, it's qu quite heavy in size as it uses a JSON file format, and you're also forced to use After Effects to create these animations, which I don't really tend to recommend to people because then you have to get the whole Adobe suit and whatnot. So an alternative to Lottie that I've been really, really enjoying is called Rive. It lets you pretty much do the same thing, and where you can import any SVGs or even create the shapes within here. But the file sizes are really, really tiny and they're also super, super duper performant. If you go over here to files, they also have a community section just like Spline does. And you can kind of see the different effects that people do. But let's let's try one out. Let's click on one. As you can see, we have the nice progress. And the same way that Spline allows you to add state and interactivity, Rive allows you to do the same thing, but in 2D. So check this out. If we hit start here, as you can see, when we go over with our mouse, it creates these heart shapes, but these have states attached to them. So if I go over it again, they light up. And when I go over them again, they explode like that, <laughs> see? So there's a lot of really interesting stuff that you can do with this. But mainly where I'd use this is to create like simple buttons like this or these cool animations. See, if you wonder like how Facebook or whatever, they're probably using Lottie or Rive or something custom made. So even their button here on the main website, as you can see, has different states on it. So if I approach it from the bottom side or the left side, it's gonna give me the, oh, look at that, how sick is that? I also really love using Doco tools if I wanna put together a really beautiful presentation website. I'll use something like Wix Studio because this also connects with Spline and Rive and all of that jazz. So if I just create a website here, I can show you in just like two seconds how easily we can incorporate something like that. So we'll pick a blank canvas for this example. I'll head over here to, let's log into Spline. And I just made a little cool effect here where you can watch the tutorial on this one. It's one of my latest videos, but we essentially created this particle effect in Spline where we hover over it, we get that cool effect, see? Where it like sucks it in, and then it just like comes back to life. So again, to add this to my website, all I need to do is hit export, and I can just copy and embed here. And then back in Wix Studio, I can just add an iframe and it'll just automatically recognize that for me. So here we are in the visual editor. So let me just show you how quickly we can do something like this. So let's expand the section. I'll remove this top bar here and the footer. I won't need this. Let's go to the plus icon and we'll just pop in an iframe like that. Go to enter code and I'll paste in my iframe just like that. And also increase the size of this to the max. Now here again, I can just tile this up really easily with CSS. So just something like that, or I can even add like animations or videos to this if I want to. So it's really easy to prototype. Maybe let's do a cool gradient here. Search gradient and I'll choose a video instead of an image. So there we go. Let's go with this, for example, update. 
and let's hit preview and see what we got. And look at that, in like three seconds, we got a cool demo up and running. So this is why I really like Wix Studio. For quick UI prototyping and chucking down ideas, I really like Figma for that. So the cool thing is uh, you can go to Figma and just like pick a frame that your website will look. So let's do a desktop. And what I really like is that you can just do a grid in like two seconds here. So I can do a 12 column grid, which is really common for web designs. And then you can just get to working, right? You can put up a nav bar. But I feel like there's a couple of underrated features within Figma. So one of them is exporting images. It's such a great tool to resize and export stuff. So this is actually a perfect transition over to the next topic I want to talk about is videos and images. I use Pexels exclusively for this one now. I don't even touch on Splash. I feel like the highest quality images and videos are here. And again, like don't go over Adobe stock or any of that unless you do need something specific. You're most likely to find stuff for free on here and it's 4K quality and all of that jazz. But you might end up going here. Let's say we get an image like this one, right? And you download it and it's quite large in quality, though you can do select the size of it here you want, but maybe you want this in a different format, maybe like a square format. So this is the power of Figma that I really love. We can just pop this in here, scale it down, just like that. And now if I go here to the image, I can change the type of it from image fill to crop, for example. And then I can maybe just crop out that bit like that. Or I make it kind of like a square format. And then I can just export it here as a PNG, a JPEG or whichever I want. So it makes it really quick to just pop something and export it to the size that I want to. You don't need to crop it. If you don't want to, you can also keep it on like fill like that. and. Look at that. Or sometimes for your website, you might just want to have like a simple SVG shape that you want to animate in. And that's another like a great tool to use Figma for that. So maybe I have a shape like this that's going to go across my website and animate in. And I can just take this shape and straight up export it as an SVG, add it to my website and then create that animation. And also, if you want to stay within the Figma ecosystem, they also have color checkers here that you can use. So they have a big list of plugins. In this case, I think it's called contrast. So when you click on that, as you can see, it just pulls up a wee menu here so you can quickly preview what's going on. And the fantastic thing is you can just live change the color here and see kind of what passes and what doesn't. So there we go. That passes. That's great. So it's a bit faster to like preview colors than using contrast checker. Nothing sparks more creativity than getting inspired by other people's projects. And there's one really good website that I like to use for this, and that's Dribbble. So if you head over to Dribbble to the web design category here, you're going to see kind of what other people are doing. And like, look at that. How cool is that? If that doesn't inspire you, I don't know what will. So Dribbble is a great place to get inspired. And also another one is award. Like this is a place where people submit their websites to that are like really fancy trying to get award for it. So as you can see, this one uses some sort of scroll animation here. It does it horizontally instead of vertically. And then we get this cool progress line as well. And if we click, as you can see, we can also jump to those sections as well. So it's using some sort of carousel, but actually using it to like do a full page screen here. Uh, so that's super cool. So yeah, check out awards, check out Dribble as well. So there we go. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Hope you learned a new thing or two. Let me know if you want me to explore more 3D. Maybe we'll do some Blender stuff on this channel. All right, let me know. Drop a sub, drop a like. And until next time, bye bye.